to go online. So that, that's the main thing. So that includes in project management. And of course, my core is actually manage the research. So that, that's my main core. So which is basically, again, another term now, outsource IT services. Uh, so these are some of the uh, core products that we have. So this is what we are selling. I won't touch too much on that. Um, so today's topics, um, I will touch on three areas of um, how we can work remotely with our teams or with our um, colleagues. Um, so it's mainly collaboration. So I'll, I'll touch on the collaboration software, uh, project management, and also client management. So, so these are the three main apps that I'll be touching on. Um, it'll be a, a bit of touch and go. You can stop me anytime to ask questions. I'm okay with that. It is a uh, uh, easy going, very uh, that, that's how Zoom networking is as well. <laughs> so uh, very relaxed. Uh, no specific structure that, that we will follow. So you can just interrupt me anytime, no issue. Um, I also introduced to you what I believe in, um, how I, I develop frameworks for my clients, which is uh, application network. So th that's how I basically uh, advise my clients to build their digital transformation on. I'll, I'll touch a bit on that. It's a bit advanced, um, but after introducing different apps, you'll understand why I want to talk to you about application network later. Um, I'll introduce to you a bit further about my clients and what I do for them a bit later on, if we have time. Okay. Um, so we, we'll first start with Google Workspace. So how I'm going, I'm going to do it is basically demos. So I'm going to demo to you. Um, so the slides are kind of just, you know, point forms of what I'm going to show you. Uh, so I'm going to touch a bit of Gmail, a bit of Google Drive, and a bit of Google Chat. Okay. Uh, so we will begin with the demo. Um, I hope you can see my Gmail screen, right? So uh, this is basically the Gmail interface. Um, it's the same as the gmail.com interface. But of course, you see something. Um, it is G Suite Cloud.online. That's my um, uh, domain name. So it's not a gmail.com, right? So that's uh, Gmail for work. Previously, to call it Gmail for work and then they call it G Suite, and then now they call it Google Workspace. Uh, so they are actually selling uh, this service to companies uh, where you can have your own email address, your own company email address using Gmail. So this is uh, a collaboration suite. They call it a collaboration suite by Google. I'm sure everybody is familiar with Gmail. Uh, so these, these are all the interfaces that you see of course, there are a lot of other um, things that you can do with Gmail, which I'm going to show you now. Um, everybody's familiar with composing new emails. Um, as you work uh, remotely, um, you're going to basically work at home. And sometimes uh, we are a bit flexible about our, our work hours. Uh, sometimes we'll take a break in the day and we'll work at night. Um, but I don't feel comfortable sending my colleagues emails at night. So that, that's the first thing that I'm gonna uh, show you. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna show uh, something, uh, send an email to myself. Okay, but before I click send, if you click on this, there's this schedule send. Uh, so this is the first thing that, that you could uh, probably, um, consider to use, I can actually pick a date and time when I want to send it. So now it's 10.20, maybe I'll send it at 10.30. So of course, in, in real scenario, I'll be sending this email at night, and then I'll choose a time to, to send it. And I'll just schedule send. So the, there'll be one scheduled email, as you can see on the left, and there you go. So this will only be sent at 10.30 a.m today right so that is the uh, feature of scheduled send um, so that is a very basic one i'm not sure whether some of you are familiar with that um, the second thing that i would want to show you is signatures 
right? Previously, there's only a single signature in Gmail, but now you can see that you have a few signatures that you can play with, and you can have different sign off, right? So I can have a signature one, signature signature two, or no signature, right? And how do you set that up? Um, basically, everything is in the setting. Okay, so this is a bit technical. Uh, there you go. There'll be this portion signature. And you can basically create new signature. So I can just create signature three. Right. And then you have another um, signature so signature three. Right. So some might be wondering why would you have so many signatures? Um, I'll show you another one. So most of us, uh, or not most of us, some of us, are, uh, one man operation, or why we call OMO. So some small businesses work alone. So what you could do is um, you could actually add another mail account or add another email address to your Gmail. Um, okay, this is not free. Uh, sorry, this one. This is not free. This is only available in uh, paid apps. So. Uh, whatever I'm showing you is um, a G Suite or Google Suite paid app. Um, it might not be available in gmail.com. Eh? So that, that's just a note. Um, so you could just add another email address. So I have a second one that I created. Verification. So there'll be some verification that I need to do. Uh, but basically, you can send now. You can send an email using a second email address. So if you have multiple email addresses in your one single account, then that signature part comes into play. You have signature one, signature two, signature three. So that that's something else that you you might want to consider. Um, if you're working uh, alone and uh, you have multiple email addresses. Okay. So oh, how many signature can we have? Um, I have not checked my the limit, but I've created up to six accounts already in my own uh, Gmail. Oh, so so far, no no limits on that. But I know there's a limit uh. so I can easily find out the limit. Um, okay, they don't say the limit here, but there there is a limit uh. I know and all limit. goes, uh, Shannon, all goes into one Gmail account. I mean, all emails will be here, correct. right? All, in the G Suite? Correct. All, correct. all emails will be here. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you have, can have multiple email addresses, but your login will still be based on this login. So you only have one login. Yeah, but all different email addresses that you have added there, I uh, can go inside there, but you have to add it here, check from other email accounts. So you need to add this into here, okay? Then you can check. Mm, so it's all right, it's, yeah. Oh, I, I use G Suite, but I didn't know that they have all this. <laughs> oh, that, that's a lot more, <laughs> a lot more things that, that we can do. Uh, so these are some of the basic ones. Uh, Okay, so another one is the chat within Gmail. Some of you might have noticed it. Um, so you have this chat, right? So typically you can chat with um, anyone. Uh, so anyone want to want to contribute their Gmail account? Nobody? Zaha, <laughs> Zaha Israel. Gmail. At uh, no, no, Tosh, Tosh group .biz. Okay, is it a Gmail account? Yes, sir. So there you go. So now I can chat with you. Oh, does it have to be a Gmail account? It has to be a Gmail base, yes. yeah. Ah, I see. Okay, okay. Uh, Google. Uh, Google base. Uh, Google, Google base, account. actually. Google account, okay. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. 
Um, so why why would we want to use this instead of WhatsApp or whatever else that you have? Uh, so the good thing is uh, Zaha. There you go. You can search the chat mm. if it's within the Google chat. So this is one of the features that I like or why I'm using Google chat that it is searchable within Gmail. Correct. correct. Um, as you know, these are all company communication. So sometimes I send things over to my colleagues using Google chat, sometimes by email, uh, sometimes by Google Drive. So all this can be integrated into Google chat. Um, so this is one of the good features. Uh. They have recently allowed us to add external domains. Uh. So that's why you can see external here. It's not within your company. So we can add anybody with a Google account now. Right. So that, that's one of the nice things. And of course, it's still within your Gmail interface. So what Google is trying to do is basically to um, bring all the communicate different communication platforms into one single page. So this is what you have now. So you have Gmail, um, you have your Google chat, and later on I'll show you how Google Drive integrates with Google chat. Right, so everything is uh, into one. Yeah. And of course you can see uh, somebody typing. <laughs> okay, um, I'll, I'll move on to the chat, more of the chat features later on. Yeah? So this is uh, one thing that you might consider and like, like I say, one of the big reasons why you want to choose Google chat is the search. Uh, it's mm. very easy to search. So that means yeah. that means it works uh, similar like Slack? Similar like Slack, correct. But of course Slack and uh, doesn't have an email interface. Uh. Correct. That, so it, it is just a communication. It, and collaboration platform. Yeah, they created Slack because they want to get away from the email communication. Correct. Um, but um, I think a lot of Slack users realize that um, it's very difficult for you to communicate purely on applications like Slack. Yes. Because some will email you. Yeah. Then when you share, um, files, although Slack can integrate with Google Drive, there's still some features that are not there. Correct, yeah. correct. Uh, so those, those are some other things. Okay. So that, that's Google Chat. Is this um, different than uh, Google Hangout? Uh, Google Hangout is the old name. The, the old name. They, they have oh. they have phased out Google, Google Hangout. So uh, Google, Google Hangout Meet. is now no more. I uh, know Google, Google Meet is the video, 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 video conference. Yeah. I see. All right. And we have room, right? Um There's room. rooms is within within chat. So there you go, room. We shall touch mm. on later. Yeah. Okay. I, so I, I, I hope Google, Google is paying you a lot for all this information. <laughs> uh I'm a Google reseller. <laughs> all right, good, good. Yeah. Okay, so, so there's uh, Google Chat within Gmail. There's one other feature in uh, Gmail that can make you work more productively and it's, it's the add-ons on the right side that you see here. Right, so I've added Asana. This is the app that I'm going to show you right after this. Um, but you can also see your calendar. Mm. So it will load up a calendar. I don't need to navigate away from... Um, basically the, the Gmail interface. Um, of course, there's also the calendar here, which you can open up a second tab. There you go. Okay. Yeah. But um, if you want to do a, a quick reference between your calendar and maybe someone sending you a invite, this is how you do it. Yeah. Wait, where did you press that to be for the site? To be at the site? I'm down here. Oh, I see, I see. So th this, three, this three is by default there. Yeah, so these are Google add-ons or okay. add-ons by Google. So in any uh, G Suite account, you will see all this at the side. So that's Google yeah, Keep. Stop it. The yeah, I saw it. Okay. it. <laughs> yeah, so there's also uh, Keep. Keep is the notes for Google and also Task. 
right? So these are the few. Uh, and then that is for uh, the Gmail interface. Uh, so we'll be moving on to Google Drive. Sorry, any questions on uh, Gmail? Anything at all? Before we move on to Google Drive. So far, so good. So far, so good. Hi, Pa Shannon. Yeah, yes. there, Eric, a question. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, just leading to what you were going, you are going to share next. Uh, it's a personal issue that I have every time. So with regards to uh, <laughs> documents, when we want to attach documents on uh, to send through Gmail, I we often get yeah. the notification right to link to Google Drive. Is there a way to get around it or? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's an option to to do that. So for example, this one right, attach mm -hmm. files. Okay, sorry. Down here, I Google link. So let me see. Okay, so that one says email. So down here, um, okay, for G Docs, you can't do an attachment. So this is the button actually to, to make it an attachment instead of a drive link. Let me look for a PDF. I think there's a PDF oh, somewhere. Ah, there attached. you go. Yeah, but this one is bigger than 25 megabytes. So there's also limits to attachments for email. Um, I thought I shared the, ah, there you go. Ah, so that. So this is a PDF file. Then I can select attachment and insert. And that is inserted as the uh, file itself instead of a Google link. Is that so if you do a Google link, I'll just show you the difference. Uh, that Google link is like that. Or Google Drive link, but if it's a file itself, it, it looks like this. Mm. So does that answer your question? Uh, sorry, do you mind uh, showing us again? Uh, so you go to the attached file, you, or you go to oh, insert right? file insert using drive. Oh, insert file. Oh, insert okay. file. Using yeah. drive. Mm. Then of course you select the file and then select attachment instead of drive link. So it means yeah. that this file has to be uploaded to our drive first, right? If it's in our uh, locally. Uh, no. our... If, if, if locally, it'd be this one, attached file. there will be local oh. PC. Yeah. yeah. So there, there's two buttons to attach. One is Google Drive and one is attached file. I'm not it sure because I'm, I'm, using a, I'm using a Mac. I always have this issue, so okay. I have to upload. <laughs> so it doesn't work yeah. on Macs, is it? Max, um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not a Mac user myself, but I'm sure if you click this, it will open up your. I think I think it's the same. Uh, it's, the it's the same. same. Yeah. Yeah. I'm using Mac, and I can attach yeah. based on on my Google Drive. Uh, it's the same thing. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll try again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. No no issues. Okay. Um. Uh, any other question? No. Uh, Okay. okay, so um, somebody mentioned something mentioned about Google Meet. Um, so they have just introduced this, I think, last month. Um, you can start a Google meeting within Gmail also. There you go. Oh, you mean right. you and mean you can just, initially uh, in Gmail, there's no Google Meet? In initially, no. no. They, they just added this in recent. Oh, okay. So you can also see all your meetings. And you're still within the Gmail interface. Yeah. We have not uh, moved away from Gmail interface. Right. So if you see what Google is trying to do, it is trying to bring all the different communication platforms that they have within a single interface. And this is true also for your mobile. If you can see on your Gmail app, either on your Android or iPhone, there's tabs at the bottom. So I think it's, uh, if I'm not wrong, email, uh, chat, and meet. Um, these these three tabs, and you can just go through the three tabs within the Gmail app, right? So so it's staying, sticking to one uh, interface, mm, nice. and, and that's where they they want to um, integrate everything. Yeah, they are term for integration um, into one interface. Yeah. So you only have one dashboard. Okay. Yes. Mm. Something like a dashboard. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions on Gmail before we move over to Google Drive? 
Nothing. Proceed. Okay. Let, let's just quickly move on to here. Okay, for G Suite, um, only for G Suite, if you have a gmail.com, you won't have this. This is called a shared drive. So this is what I'm going to introduce to you. Um, normally, you would have my drive and shared with me. Mm. So these are the two common folders that you usually work with in Google Drive. But if you have a G Suite for business, you would have this shared drive. And shared drive works almost similar to how my drive works, but it is what we call um, the company's shared drive. So everything you see here is attached to this account. Right. So what do I mean by that? Um, okay, so if I go back to share with me. So these are some of the things I, I shared to myself earlier from, from my own Pulse Region account. And you can see that this thing owner, right? Mm. So owner is Shannon at PulseRegion.com. But if you move to shared drive, so this is a shared drive test. And if I select any of this, you can see that there's no owner. They want to emphasize, or Google wants to emphasize that the ownership of all these files within Chat Drive is under the domain G Suite Cloud dot online. Why is this important? Uh, one is of course intellectual property. You would want any files or resources that uh, all stuff in your company is working on is owned by the company. Mm. So when the staff leave, the ownership of the file still remains within the company. That, that is uh, important for some of the SMEs. Yeah. So you can see everything that is shared here. You, you don't see ownership. You can see who creates, but that, that's about it. There's no mention about ownership. Mm. Right. So creator is Shannon at PulseRegion.com. But it's not the owner. Okay, so that is the core of uh, the idea of shared drive. The other one, of course, is sharing. They don't call it share; they call it members. Right. So you are not exactly sharing; you are adding members into the folder. Right. And if you notice, you can also assign someone outside the domain or outside your company as a member. Right, and there are different levels of membership. It's quite self-explanatory. Um, who gets what? Right. But the outside okay. member must okay. use must use Google-based email, G Suite, right? Uh, yeah. So must have a Google account. Um, you can you can add your Outlook.com or Yahoo.com email as a Google account. I'm not sure whether you guys know that, but you can actually create a new Google account based on your Outlook.com or Yahoo.com or whatever. Oh. So you can just do that and then you can really participate within Google Drive. Oh. So it's like yeah. when a person who like using, uh, does it work for Hotmail as well? Yep. So Hotmail, like Hotmail is based on Outlook.com. So if the guy is so old school and using Hotmail until today, then it, but then he needs to communicate with us who are actually using Google Base, then his Hotmail can actually use that same platform and integrate and work together with us. Is that what you mean? Um, yes. Oh. So, but the user must create the Google account under his Hotmail. Account. He might as well change it to Gmail. Comment just <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so for example, uh, okay, sorry, I can't open new tab. So, um, I'll just add a new account, right? So create account for myself. Uh, okay, so I I can't do this within the interface of uh, when I'm locked in already. Mm. But if I, I'm not locked in, you they will. Ask you to enter in your own email address, not a gmail.com. Uh, yeah, then you can create your own Google account. Yeah. All right, all right. So at the moment so you I have to log in, out first. You have to log out first um, and then you can create another one. 
Um, not not exactly. You can create a gmail.com, but I cannot create a outlook.com Google account lah because I'm logged oh, in to see. Google. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's yeah. like having a yeah, MacBook. You, it's like having a MacBook but using Windows. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> yes, it's similar. Yeah. Similar. Correct. Okay, so um, that that's that's about uh. Let me see something else that I wanted to show. Um, okay, so it's not here. Uh, there, there is a difference between the usage. Okay, down here. So you can see that um, this is a hack, H-A-C-K. Uh, why, why do I call it a hack? Uh, because um, you don't take up space when I use shared drive. You can see that the storage is still zero bytes. Do you see on the on the left side? But I actually have files ex, uh, that I uploaded, right? So I have files here, here, here. Uh, Share with me. Of course, I have nothing inside my drive. I didn't upload anything. Oh, so but it's under only... shared drives, I did upload. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it actually came so into this, this is a hack. Hmm. Yeah, so we are not using any space at all. That, that's what I'm trying to say. When we use shared drive, we are not using our personal space. Right? Oh. Usually we will get 30 GB or, or 1 terabyte. Uh, now they increase it to 2 terabytes. Uh, but for a shared drive, it doesn't seem to take up any space at all. If I upload it huh? directly to shared drives. How do you get shared drive shared drive near? Eh? Because I don't see it on mine. Um, because you are not a G Suite business uh, account. Oh. You you need to be eh? G Suite business, not G Suite basic. I see. Okay, okay. Then you get this shared drive. Okay. Yeah. So then use up the storage. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Upgrade and anything. Yeah. So you need to upgrade. Yeah. You need to upgrade. Call China. To China upgrade for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So if I just go to the G Suite admin console, uh, okay. I don't know whether they will show me what license. Um, I don't think they show me the license. Where's my billing? There. Okay, so this is the new name, the Google Workspace Business Standard. But this is basically the G Suite business. Uh. Mm. Right. So this is, if I'm not wrong, sixteen dollars, sixteen Singapore dollars uh, per month. Workspace. And just a quick one. There you go. So this, this is the one. So this one has the shared drives. Well, this business starter does not have. Okay, so so there's the different plans. Um, so most of the things that I show you will be based on the business standard account. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I I do you do you want to see um for example. Okay. I'm sure everybody knows this, that if I share this to Zaha, for example. Okay. Zaha is rain, is it? Yeah. Dosh group dot please. Okay, there you go. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, so you can edit the file together. I'm sure most of you know this already. So this, this is yeah, the, save automatically. Uh, and also save automatically. So yep. this is the good part. Yeah. So Zaha, if you can just open the file at your end. Are you able yeah, to I do that? I am opening it. Okay. 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 So you can see this thing comes up to show that somebody else is working on it. There you go. Yeah. So this is one of the advantages. So Zaha, keep, keep this dog open um, so I can show something else to, to you. 
Yeah, um, okay. So if I do a comment, oops, they don't allow me to add comments. Okay. So I can just say Zaha. Okay, so approve. Then assign to you. And what happens is Zaha will get an email, right? Saying that there's a comment for him to approve. So this is Google Docs. So either approve or review or whatever you want to do with it. Um, that moves on to my next thing that I want to show you. If Zaha, you can just um, also comment to me. To me, meaning to demo at G Suite. Oh, wait. So we can just highlight anything and then just comment. Or down here, comment. Okay. So open the doc and then yep. comment on the. Yeah, but you need to highlight myself. Uh. So you need to press add. Oh, need demo. Uh, reply. Okay. Uh, that's yeah. reply. Is that one? Yeah, there. So I, I don't see the comment. You, you, can you comment? This one. Oh. Add a comment. Anyway, this is the integration that I wanted to show you. There you go. So everything is inside Google chat. Right. So if I go back to here. Okay. You've added a comment already, is it? Mm. Not yet. I think I did that. <laughs> I did that. The one yang kat bawah tu, bukan eh. To test reply. No, this is a comment on what I added. If you want to comment to me, uh, if you uh -huh. add a new comment. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let me try. Add new comment. Eh? So, yeah. Comment. Okay. I am testing. So you must uh, uh, highlight my, my name. Uh, add. Demo at G Suite. Demo at demo at demo at G Suite at Cloud. This one dot dot online. Online. Yeah. Okay. There you I go. Hmm. Right. So I. This, this is basically a comment that I will see and whether I want to resolve it or I want to reply to it. So I, I can do this. Um, so this is working within a single interface again, rather than you moving between uh, emails or chats or anything else. Um, this is how you do it. But the good thing is they have just recently integrated comments into chat. So if you can see chat here, I can actually reply to him. So I can just uh, click open and then it will open the Google Docs again. Well, my internet is a bit slow now. Right, so it will basically open this and I can, I can continue chatting down here or working on the document, right? Um, so that is the integration with uh, Google Drive and Google Chat. So as you can see, uh, there's a lot of integrations that Google is doing now. Why? Because they have realized that a lot of us are not just using a single application, but we are using multiple applications within Google or outside Google. Right. So there's a lot of integration. So um, if you look at this, I've actually integrated Asana Bot. Right, so there are a lot of these bots. Um, so I can just add bots. Um, there you go. You can see all the different application bots that you can work with. So I'm sure Slack is there. No, no, Slack is not there. <laughs> Trello, there, Trello is there. Right. Slack is under Microsoft. So there are quite a few. 
Yes, that's why. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so there, there are quite a few. There are also some integrations that is custom that, that you can add uh, uh, separately. Yeah. So, so what's the purpose of this bot application? Okay, so um, as you can see, I can do a search within uh, Google or Google Chat. So at Asana. Okay. Yeah. So these are the different uh, things that you can do with Asana bot. So let's say Asana me, right? Sorry, Asana me. Yeah. So this is just telling you about my Asana user information, right? Then I can say Asana, what are my tasks? My task. Then he release all the tasks I have in Asana. Wow. There you go. Right. So and then of course they don't list all, I think. They list only the first five, I think. I have more than five. <laughs> and if you click here, it will open up to the Asana app. Right. So these, these are some of the purposes of the bots. Um, they do give um developers some guidelines on how to create the bot so they can actually create their own bot or you can create your own bot just get a developer to, to create your own bot with your own application right so this, this is uh, some of the options for chat right so as you can see as i am doing my demo i mean i'm moving across all the different google apps um, because it's very integrated so i'm do demoing my docs and then I'm moving to my chat, right? So this this chat, the way I, I see it is like a platform where I can get alerts on whatever apps that I have, or at least those that have the bots built in within Google Chat, right? So that, that is the function of uh, Google Chat for me at least. And of course the search, uh, mm. okay? Any questions so far about uh, Google Drive? Uh, the shared drives. Everything good? Good, good. Okay, so, let, so let, let's move on to, I think the next one would be, so I showed you the bots, I showed you shared drives. Yes. Um, I touched a bit on working together. Um, okay, so one of the things also that you could do, um, just to show you. Okay, so this is too large. I, I can't show you here. So hold on. Eh? I'll just create a, a Microsoft Word app. So test Word doc. Save. Okay, so this is a Microsoft Word document. It's actually a .docx. So it's a Word document. But when I open it up, right now, okay, just let it load. Huh? Not sure my, my internet is slow today. I think here also slow. Uh, so basically what, what I'm trying to show you is that you can you can edit Microsoft Word documents now within Google Drive. You do not need to download, edit, then upload again. <laughs> I can't even load the page. Ah, okay, there you go. Oh, so this is not... Um, okay, uh, there you go. So it's a DOCX mm -hmm. file. Right, so if I like, uh, right, and then I save it, which is auto saved, and then I re download it. So it is actually a Word document, if you can see at the bottom right. 
So it is not downloaded as a Google Doc, but as a Microsoft document. Right, so this works for documents, uh, for Word, Excel, and also uh, PowerPoint, not so much, if you can see just now. Um, but because this is too large. Uh. But PowerPoint, I don't recommend because the formatting is still not that good between PowerPoint and uh, Google Slides. Uh, right, so it's still not that good. I yeah, but for it's... Word and Excel, it's okay. Yeah. So um, you can still work on your favorite document processor or spreadsheet processor. Okay. So within Google Drive. Why would you want to do that? Uh, basically, your Google Drive is your storage. Mm. Right. But it is it can be separate from how you edit the files. So if you still prefer to use Word or Excel, you still can do it and you can still edit it. Right. And then you can still send to someone who doesn't use Google Drive. Yeah. Of course, um, they are improving the formatting because the, the early versions of it, um, the formatting always runs. That, that's yes. something that is always uh, an issue previously. Yeah, but now it's getting better. So far, I see Word and Excel works fine. I can work on uh, a Word doc on Google Drive without issues. Right, so that's that's what we are doing now. Yeah, so talking about telecommuting, in fact, now uh, in Singapore, in phase two, you still have to split your teams, right? Uh, and some of them wants to go back to work, uh, but you only can spend half the time in office. So only two and a half days in office. Uh, so basically you still need to work from a separate office. Uh, so this, this is how you can do it. You don't need to use your own computer. You can just use a shared computer. And that's what I've been setting up for one of my clients. They set up a second office, but we do a hot desking concept. So we just put PCs there and anyone who had, um, works on that day at that location can just log into Google and just do their work uh, without any issues. All their files are there, emails are there, everything is there. So, so that, that's the advantage of working in the cloud, right? And, and in this uh, situation, uh, at least. Okay, so, so that's about Google. Um, of course, there are a lot of other functions. Um, I'll just show you quickly calendar. Um, so you can create a calendar, right? So this one, if you can see, you, you can add the Google Meet video conferencing here, right? But I can just show you uh, Google Calendar Zoom plugin or integration. So they do have this uh, Zoom add-on for G Suite, right? So you can actually, instead of selecting Google Meet, you have two options. One is Google Meet and the one is to create a Zoom. Of course, you. I think you have to have the paid Zoom account to create a meeting within here. I see, right? yeah. So that, that's something that's, else you have that's, to pay that's, for. Yeah. That's uh, define <laughs> the partnership. Uh. <laughs> yeah, correct. Okay, so that, yes. that's about the uh, calendar event. Um, for find time, uh, you can only find time for Google accounts, right? So you need to add mm. a guest first. So uh, green, and then, okay. then uh, okay. so if you do a find time, you can see that I cannot have access to Zaha's uh, account. So it doesn't work. Okay, yeah, calendar cannot be shown. So it only works within your company. Right, or if Zaha has given access his calendar to me, then this will work. Right. So this oh, is one of that. the things that I always get. <laughs> this is one of the things that I always have uh, questions on. Why can't I do the find time thing? Right. Because in Outlook you can do that for Microsoft uh, Exchange or for Outlook accounts. Right. But of course, Outlook account is very. Uh, they, they they don't allow. Um, other people to come in. So you are only working within your organization. So that's why it's oh. easier for them to integrate all these things. Yeah. Another one is add attachment. This is something that very few people um, use. 
uh, but you can actually do this. You can actually add, attach a um, Google Drive file to your calendar, right? So it's something that you can use when you do your discussions later on. Okay, and I think that that's about all that I want to show you for Google Calendar. Um, any questions so far? Post. Uh, you you were saying just now we cannot find time uh, outside the company meaning the organization meaning yeah. you cannot find time for your client because your client is outside the organization. cannot even though we are using that's right even though yeah. we, we are using G Suite I mean G Suite, G Suite. yeah cannot hmm. so you need access to their calendars to do that but if we we yeah. if we grant the access then you can actually have that. Um, if you grant the access, uh, I've not tried that. Uh, so far, what we've done internally for my company is is everybody has everybody's uh, calendar access. Huh? Mm. So in my company, you can see on the left side is everybody's calendar. Then I can do the fine time. But we've never tried with external parties. Yeah, Because exactly. it doesn't make sense. Um, if you've got to keep allowing other people access to your calendar, then you just doesn't make sense. Huh? So it's not very practical. It's only for internal meetings, then it's uh, practical. Yeah. Shannon? Yep. Sorry, Shannon. Uh, we uh -huh. can create a different, different project calendar inside here? Yep. Sharing yeah. it with different, different team? Yep. So you can create other calendars. You can create a new calendar. Mm. So, uh, back and demo. Create calendar. And then you can share the calendar. Yeah, okay. just that particular calendar again. Yeah, so where is that? This one, then I can <laughs> share the calendar. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Share with specific people. Then you can share. Right. Um, so again, this one you need, of course, a, a Google account to share. Same thing like your Google, right? Yeah. Okay, you can make it public also if you want. Although I don't recommend. Um, even for your Google Drive, um, just a fair warning. Don't share to public uh, because you don't know who you're sharing with. Always share to specific people. Yeah. If you want to share a file you know, to the public, you shouldn't do it from Google Drive. You should do it from your web hosting. Right, so put it into your web hosting account and then will be public on the internet. That, that's oh, a safer way. So yeah. meaning you're saying yeah. you don't share your Google Drive folder even? Yeah, correct. I don't do that at least. Because mm, yeah. yeah, once you open a yeah. door, there will be many doors open. All right. And all your company files are there. So for your web hosting or for your website files is just website files. Uh. Yeah, there, there's no not much risk of any data there, even if it's leaked, there's no confidential data. All so right. you kind of separate your files out. Yeah. So some people do this, they create a new folder and then they name it public, you know, and then share it to public. Uh, but you have to note that they, they are still accessing your Google Drive. Right? Yeah. So some hackers with that information, they can do wonders. Right? <laughs> so just, just be careful about that. Yeah. So I, I don't recommend doing this. This is not a good idea. Okay. Um, any questions on Google? Because I, I want to quickly move on to Asana. It's already 11. Okay, no. no questions then. Um, yeah, proceed, Asana. proceed. Asana. Okay, so Asana is a task management system. So I, I kind of created it already. Um, it, it's very basic. Uh, it is not uh, as uh, advanced as what you have with Trello and Slack. Uh, but why I use Asana is, again, it's integration with uh, Gmail. 
Okay, so for mm. example, um, I'll just create a new project. Mm. Okay, so they call it Okay. Yeah, a member. Okay, so I can add anybody here. So for example, I think you have a Asana already, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then I can create a new project. Project one, and you can select the team, right? So this is the team that I created, and then just do a list, create project. Okay. Uh, so sorry for for going a bit fast, but um, basically what I just did is just to create the team, which is Zack and demo, and I added the users within the team. So this is how Asana works. There's two levels of uh, control for um, access. So one is the team. So I have two teams, operations and the end demo, and you can add members. So the different teams will have different members. Okay. I'm using the free account. Um, so Zaha can still see my operations if I have assigned any tasks within here. If it's a paid Asana account, I can restrict access to a team or to a project. Okay, so if you can see when I created the project, um, this one, right? This option. So if it's a, because I'm on the trial, um, if it is a free account, you only have the first option. You can't have it private. Right, so that is oh. one uh, downside for Asana. Right, so you have to be very sure if you're using the free account, whoever you add, you must always remember that they may still see your other project, even though they are not in the same team. Right, because it's always public. So that, that's something you have to be careful of. Um, so how Asana works is you just create a task, um, you assign it, so of course I will assign it to Zaha and I just create a due date, right? So tomorrow and that's it. Um, so I can just um, comment, uh, add Zaha, please complete this by tomorrow, right? And comment. Okay, so what I like about this, if you, I go back to my Gmail, Okay, it might be a bit slow to come in. Okay, so it's not come in yet. Um, basically, it will create an email to notify me that there is a task that is assigned to me. And you can actually reply using Gmail. So again, I don't even actually need to open up Asana to reply. I could just reply it within Gmail. Okay. So, okay, so the email is a bit slow. And you can spam, it's not spam. Okay. So anyway, uh, I'm not sure if Zaha sees this in his uh, email, since he also has Asana account. Did, did you receive any email, Zaha? Yes, I do. Yeah. I action required yeah. and yeah. assign you to you a task already. Yeah, so you can actually reply to the, that email. And then the, the reply will actually appear in the Asana task itself. Right. So you mean so, reply via the email or reply in Asana? Via the email. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not sure why mine is not uh, appearing. Uh, so let me test this. Yeah, you could test yours. Okay, I am testing the reply via uh, 
We'll go there. Yeah. Okay. Save. Hmm. Ada. Keluar. Belum. Not yet. So it will take some time. It looks like it. Oh, the internet is slow. <laughs> Something there. Okay, never mind. But okay, what's the difference between Google yeah. Tasks and uh, Asana? Um, Google Tasks is very basic. It's just a list. Oh, okay. Um, you you can't do much eh, to it. Eh. You can't so, delegate. So, uh, I'll show you why hmm. I. Yeah, you can delegate. You can share the task. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do. Uh. Okay, okay. So it's just a list. Yeah, okay, my Asana keep building. Why why I like Asana in the end, why I use Asana is actually because of this application. Oh no. <laughs> so it's still loading. Okay. Uh so this integrates with Asana. This right? is Instagram. So just let it go. It's a gun chat, right? It's a gun chat. And in it, it integrates with Asana and the sync is almost immediate. Mm. Well, when your internet is fast, uh, <laughs> then it will be immediate. Oh, so there is no gun chat in Asana? There is, but it's not free. Oh, so there Instagram is, but it's is not free. free. I so see. Can we view this Instagram uh, using our mobile? Um, no, not, not very well. Uh, done up in mobile. So even I, for Asana, it's not that good. I see it's all on laptop base. Mm. Yeah, you, most, you need a big screen uh, basically. Mm. Yeah. How can you okay, connect my, my internet with, is very good. with the uh, Asana? Okay, so um, I've already integrated it. So when you log in, they will ask you whether, um, okay, so I'll just log out first. Um, Instagram. Okay, so when I log in, oh, I can log in using my Asana account. I see. And it will automatically um, synchronize. Ah, okay. Yeah, of course, I have my Asana logged in already. Yeah. And yeah, it straight away locks in. So it is uh, very integrated with Asana. Hmm. So let me just see if you can open up my project. Okay, there you go. So if you can see, I've, I've already done a, a bit of a demo. Um, so these, these are the things that you can do with Asana tasks in Instagram, right? So whatever I do here, it will be reflected back in Asana. Okay, this is not loading. Let's hope it loads. Okay. Okay, so if it's yeah, the same list as this. All right. Uh, just open up. Um, so let's see, I, I check this off. Mark this task as complete. All right. Okay. Um, down here, it will, it will sync as this is complete. Of course, it takes time to sync. Um, if you're not patient, you can just click there and it will resync. And it will sync automatically. There you Ooh. go. So it's my check as done, right? You can click here um, and then you can basically uh, change the dates, change the signing here. Everything will be synced back to Asana, right? Okay, so if you add um, and, a task in the Asana, will it synchronize in the Instagram? Immediately. Yeah, yep, it will. It will. Yeah, so it will. Let me just um, add one. Uh, new task. Right. And then, okay, I won't assign it here. I will assign it here. 
Oops. Uh, cannot. Okay. Okay. There you go. And if I assign somebody here, um, so it will also be reflected here. There. Yeah. Mm. Right. So it's, it's almost immediate across. Mm. Okay, of course, the only thing that you can't do in Instagram is the um, the comments. So these comments uh, can only be done within here. Right. Down here. I see. I don't think they've, they've created the comments. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But you can open in Asana. Right. So you can select this and then open it in Asana. Then open a new window. Okay. So down here, you can do the comment. Okay. Um, another thing about Asana that I like, of course, is let me just delete this. Okay. So the, the good thing about Asana that I like also is the subtask. So we can create subtask here. Right. So I can actually break down the task into different subtasks. So like for example, this is the last stage of my uh, project. And then I can just uh, edit as invoicing here. What do I need to do actually for the invoicing? So send the invoice, give payment reminders, so on and so forth. Right. So every task there's a subtask. And of course, I can assign it to different people for each subtask. Okay, so that, that's the advantage or why I like Asana. Of course, the other one is it's free. La. <laughs> yeah, it's it's totally free. Uh only the advanced op uh, options that uh in Asana that's not free. Right, so like timeline, right? So this timeline, uh, it's not free. You need to pay for it. Yeah, and if you notice, it's it's a separate list. Right, this list doesn't appear here. Right. So that is the a bit of a bad thing with uh, Asana. It's quite complex. Yeah. Okay. Is, is Asana free or is it subscription based? It's free. Um, it's free, but um, of course there's subscriptions also. So you would need to, but the free, of, I'm using the free account and it, it serves me uh, well enough. Oops. It goes back to me. Um, yeah, I can't show you here, but I can log out and show you later on. But um, there, there are different plans. Uh. Yeah. If I remember correctly, um, the basic plan is not that expensive. Huh? Yeah. So it is uh, still quite affordable for Asana. I know a few clients that actually pay uh, for the Asana plan because of the certain features that they want, which I think is uh, worth it uh, for Asana. Yeah. And of course, uh, the other part that uh, this add on, right? So, for example, this one. So, there, there's an add on for Asana, and I can just create a, a new task here. Then I can just add the email to the task. Oh, that's awesome. Right. Uh, yeah. So, if the task is based on an email, then this, this will work very well. Mm. And I just create the task. Cool. Yeah. So then that's what I like about the Asana add-on. Then there you go. So that's a task done already. So if you go back to here, my tasks, um, there you go. So this is the one that I created just now. And the email is here. Yeah. So they copy the email over to here. Yeah. Okay, so it creates a task. Um, so if you are looking at the my tasks view, so this is usually how I work. I will log in and I look at my tasks and everything that is tasks assigned to me will be here. 
and I can see when it is due, uh, what project is it under, everything is here. All right. If I want to see communications uh, between my members, then it's here. All the different communications or actions done by my team will be here. All right. So there you go. Everything is here. So even comments that we make will also show here. So this is basically the activity. So this is another way mm. to look at all your tasks. Yeah. Um, if you are managing a team, yeah, this, this will be important. Um, because some comments are not to you and not to your tasks assigned to you. So if you are the admin, you can see everything. So you can monitor what is going on with all your different projects. So this is one other thing that I like about Asana. What I don't like about Asana, I can't filter by uh, comments. I cannot search comments. Wow. Oh. So there, there is no searchable. It's only search here, but I can't search in the activity. So this is where you like chat, oh. uh, Google chat more. Yeah, correct. Um, so this is one uh, downside of uh, uh, Asana because um, I do use Asana with some of my clients as ticketing system. So um, certain comments uh, with regards to certain issues I can't search. So how do you so that, how do problem. you manage that that problem? Well, Gmail lah, mm. because the the Asana ticket will be in Gmail. Yeah, can supposed to be lah, but for mine, eh, I'm not sure why it doesn't appear. But yeah, every comment that they make to you or from you, um, it will appear here. Right. So that, that is uh, one thing good about the integration with uh, Gmail. So I do actually, I do my search for Asana inside here rather than inside here. Mm, yeah. True. So that, that's something. Yeah. So, so these are all the little, little workarounds that, that I did for within my, the, the way I work with my team. Uh. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, the workaround. Yeah. Um, just a quick one. Um, okay, so how do you add? Uh, okay, maybe I, I add another project. So we've created a project just now, Zach and Demo. So we'll just add that project. Okay, so the project is there already. Okay, so um, how do I uh, schedule inside the uh, gone chart basically? Uh, if I just do this, um, I can just click and drag. So that's how easy it is. And then I just add another task. And again, I just click and drag. Um, if you are familiar with gone chart, you can also connect the uh, dependency they call it. So task three is dependent on task two and so on. So we can actually, oops, can just connect the task. So why why is this important? If I just shift this, you can see that task three is following. Because yes, task because three needs to be after task two. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so there you go. So this is the best part about Instagram and that I like. So especially when you have this kind of uh, projects where there's a lot of uh, mini tasks mm. and one delay will cause a delay for the rest uh, because everything is connected. So, so for example, I've just completed this, right? And this is today. So I need to drag this to here because it's just completed today. So everything gets delayed and you can see at the end when my project will actually be completed. So this gun, uh, this so Instagram, this Instagram, uh, yeah. even your teammates, your client also can have, uh, if we give access, they can also adjust this, this Instagram, this gun chart, right? Yes, can, correct. But 
Okay, so th there's a difference between access to Instagram and access to Asana. So my uh, clients cannot access this. But my clients can access this. So they can actually, so Zaha can access all this. Right? Yeah, so you, they can actually change the due date here. Lah. So this is the due date I set in Instagram. Yeah, so this is kind of a issue if you don't want to allow clients to change. Yeah, but um, if you just want clients to view, uh, don't give them access, this time they actually can export. So you can export as PDF. Okay, so if I just generate, it will basically create a gun chart for you in PDF. So this is another cool thing about Instagram. So it immediately can export. Yeah. So those are some of the workarounds that you need to consider. Okay. Um, any questions on Instagram so far or Asana? Simple enough. So this, this is the project management part. Um, it is not as complex as uh, some uh, project management functions that you may need. Uh, this is more for simple projects uh, and it doesn't link you back to the applications that you are working with. So what am I talking about? For example, I'm doing invoicing, right? It doesn't link me back to the invoicing application, right? So um, Eric was mentioning about ERP. Some ERPs has project management and everything will be linked. So if you have an uh, invoicing uh, task here, uh, it will, you can just click a link there and it will bring you to the invoice, for example. Right. Of course, you can do it here also. You just add the link to your online invoice if you're using online invoice. Yeah, but that's again a, another workaround. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's the difference. Um, so if you can see what I'm showing you guys is actually more for small businesses to use rather than enterprises. Yeah. Enterprises may not consider Asana. Yeah, because it's very basic. But for us small businesses, I think it works perfectly. I mean, it's not complex. It's very easy to use. Uh, one click does everything that you need and that's it. Yeah. So that, that's the, the good thing about Asana. And even whatever I showed you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so I've shown you Instagram and Asana. Um, last one is HubSpot. Um, if there's no other questions to with Asana, I'll just move on to the last one. Okay. Um, HubSpot. So HubSpot is in traditional terms, they call it as customer relationship management system or CRM. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. I just let it load. Okay. Um, can you guys still hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. So I'll just show you the pricing since I since I'm kicked out. HubSpot itself is not cheap. You can see that. Right. It's uh, the starter itself is sixty three dollars per month. Um, but there is free tools that I, I use, right? And you can see there are some crazy numbers here, lah, right? Um, this is similar to Salesforce. So Salesforce is really an enterprise cloud system. So HubSpot is pushing themselves as a, a enterprise system, right? But they also cater to small companies. So there you go. So these are all the free tools that they provide, which is good enough for most small businesses, right? So you have the basic 
managing of your clients, contact management, the companies. Um, you can create forms for marketing, email marketing, um, live chat, which I'll, I'll show you later on. Um, the team email, that one also I'll show you. Um, so let me try to go to my dashboard. Okay. I hope it loads. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, this is the context. Um, if you can see or if you notice, Zaha's email just came in and it is captured uh, within HubSpot. So this is the automation that we would appreciate very much. Uh, without even doing anything, they have entered Zaha as a contact. Okay, for in this case, it's Asana actually. Okay, but I, I've tested one email from my Belitung Business Center account. And it's just an email. I did not enter this manually. And if you click on my name, it will tell you all the activities that the company has with this account. So be it um, emails, uh, be it chats, um, anything. Calls, of course, calls is a paid account. Uh, if you can see, there you go. So you need to upgrade it. So calls is not a free option. Um, it even captures the phone number that I display on my website. Right? I, I don't have this number in the email. So if you can see why I email, I just email this test, right? Um, there's no phone number that I put here. But this HubSpot is smart enough to capture the number from my website, which is amazing uh, to, to me. It's, it's like um, I don't need to do any searches or anything, and it, it's capturing so many things. Yeah. Um, it even shows you how many times uh, this account visits your website and the number of pages viewed when it when it visits everything. So that is why um, I, I just love to um, promote HubSpot. I'm not a reseller, but I think it's a very good um, CRM for small businesses, especially if we don't have enough staff to actually do all these little, little things, right? Um, so what else does it have? Uh, I'll just show you the inbox. So this is connected to my email. So whatever I email here will be inside. Whatever I receive here will be inside here, if it loads. Huh? So again, now there's issues with loading. Um, so while it loads, I'll just show you something else that can be integrated very easily, which is the chat. So this is the chat that I did earlier, just as a demo. Right, so I chatted up. Um, okay, there. So as you can see, all the emails that I received. Okay. Just ignore the errors for a while. Uh, so these are all the emails that I received here. Then it goes into here. Right, so all the emails and it is captured. Um, and connecting an email account is as simple as connect another channel. Right, so down here. And you can just add a Gmail, uh, I think an Outlook.com or Microsoft 365 account. Well, if it loads again. Sorry for the delays, uh, it's uh, something wrong with my internet today. <laughs> okay, there you go. So you can even connect a Facebook Messenger to HubSpot. So when I say connect, what, what does it mean? Um, you can actually interact with the user based just from the single dashboard again or single interface, which is HubSpot. So just a case in point, if I can load my inbox again. Okay, so um, there's a chat here. So my chat is still open, right? Oops, connection issue. Okay, so if I do a chat here, Right, so there you go, that's an alert. 
And there. So this, this is the whole chat that I'm having with this guy. Okay. So I can even reply from here. Hi, test, receive, and send. And it will appear here. Right. So again, it's a single interface for you to look at your emails, at your chats, and if you want your Facebook Messenger. Right. And all these are captured again in your context. So it's uh, this is what uh, CRM is supposed to do. Uh, capture all the communications you have with clients, um, understand um, their background of or the history of them with your company, and then you can manage them better. Okay, so, so that's the hotspot for you. Um, you can ask me about hotspot, um, but frankly, I'm still a basic user of hotspot. I'm not an advanced user. I don't use the marketing yet. There's so many things that you can do. Uh, so there you go. You can connect to your Google app, your Facebook, your Instagram, but I have not done that. Okay, this, this run all campaigns. Marketing. Can. Yeah, correct. Yes. So this is uh, adding your Google ad account or your Facebook ad account. Yeah, but I've not tried that yet. So I, I won't demo to you. Uh, that, that's something that I'm not familiar with. Yeah. I, I outsource my marketing anyway. So I, I don't do my internal marketing. Okay, so you can also do, okay. So you can see that this is not a free uh, option. You have to upgrade. So yeah. Okay, so um, they don't have invoicing here, if you notice. They have quotes, but not invoices. Um, I think this one is also not free. Sorry, this is free, but this is not free. So this is their ticketing system, All right? Um, I saw it, I, I played around with it with my demo trial or demo account last time. Um, it's quite good, but again, it's expensive. Huh? So frankly, it's very expensive uh, at, at the prices that they are selling it at. Okay. Um, analytics is also something that I don't use that much because you need to integrate it with your website, your social media at, uh, account. So again, this is something that I don't use. And again, it's not free. Yeah. Right. This is something that's also paid. Yeah. Um, so what I'm, I'm trying to impress on you is that Hotspot is good for uh, companies that are just starting to use CRM. Uh, it's free. It does a lot of things automatically for you. You don't need to do a lot of uh, entering or data entry. Uh, and integration is very simple with your Gmail, with your website, everything is easily integrated, right? Um, so, so that's on HubSpot. Um, any questions so far on HubSpot? Everything good? So far, well, we haven't tried yet, so. Yeah. Uh, it's it's so, okay. So that, that okay. is, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so, so that's HubSpot for you. Um, the integration between Gmail and Hotspot is mainly in the inbox. Huh? That's something that I don't like actually. Um, because for me, I would rather work everything within uh, Gmail interface. Uh, but I also know that there's a lot of data in the CRM. So there is no avoiding uh, working on a separate interface for my client management. Yeah, but that's something that you have to do. Yeah. So if you can see my tabs, this is something that I don't like to see. <laughs> There's so many things that is open and I have to keep um, going through the tabs to look for information. And this would happen to you also if you work a lot on the browser. I would rather just work on a single interface or at least just two interfaces. 
And then the rest, once I'm done, I'll just close it up. Yeah. Okay, so that's something that you have to um, remind yourself of. Uh, if you are working remotely and everything's on the browser, by the time you want to look for some data that you've worked on like 10 minutes ago, you would have like 20 tabs to look through. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So it's, that's something to be aware of. Okay. Um, if there's no questions, then I'll, I'll just show you what um, my, what I base my uh, concepts or frameworks on. Um, it's from this company called MuleSoft. Um, so M-U-L-E-S-O-F-E. -E. I, I didn't create it myself, obviously. Um, so they are a data integration website, right? Okay, so it goes to here instead. Okay, so they, they have their own platform. Of course, the platform that you know very well just now you saw is uh, Salesforce. Okay, so they, so there you go. Okay, so uh, I, I base a lot of my concepts and frameworks on what, what they do. And what they do is this application network. They, they, they coined this term application network and what it is, um, okay, sorry for the, the, the slides, uh, but basically um, if you can see right at the bottom is all your apps. Mm. This is where all your data sits in be it your Gmail, um, Hotspot, Asana, um, so all are here. Each of them would have a function, the system APIs they call it. A bit technical, sorry, but I'm just trying to explain to you how um, application networks are. And then above the system APIs or the functionalities within each app, for example, Gmail notification, you would have a process or workflow application. Okay, so this has, this might be, for example, here is your order and reservation fulfillment. This one uses Gmail and also Salesforce data to provide this function order reservation, for example. Right. And where does this come from? It comes from customer and their orders through and interface either your website, ordering system, or your POS at your retail. Right. So this is how usually um, I would create the framework for my clients. Yeah. So it's, it's that way. Um, a simpler uh, look at how the application network might be. So as you use small applications across the internet or on the cloud, uh, this is how you do it. So you have product information, you have transaction history from your ERP, customer data from Salesforce, and this is all that you can do with your application. So as you develop your applications across different providers, this is what you could do. So in simpler terms, it is uh, layering. So we just create layers above your app applications, right? And this is what I use. So I'm just showing you what, what I do. Um, so for client management, you saw it really, hotspot. Um, operationally, I use Zoho. Uh, for my finance or accounting, I use Xero um, and so on and so forth. Right? For my e-commerce, I use WooCommerce. Uh, but I want to highlight something is that as you create your apps or as you use more and more apps, you must be aware of data integrity, um, which application holds the true or correct data. That is very important. And for me, I make sure my CRM or my client management system holds the true data. WooCommerce can have their separate data in WooCommerce. 
but I make sure HubSpot holds the most updated data. And if I need to find a data or something about a client, I will always go back to HubSpot. That's why HubSpot is in the middle, right? It holds all my data. Okay. Hmm. Um, okay, so, so that, that's about it. Um, so the next blue slide is just what I do. So I offer help desk call center. So this is my core business at the moment. We also offer IT support and maintenance contracts to small companies. Um, so this is uh, another support contract. Uh, so some are prepaid by hours, some are two half days every week. So these are some of the uh, support contracts that I offer. These are some of the clients that I am now serving or I served before. Right. So my verticals that I support are mainly actually law firms and accounting firms and recently non-profits. Okay. Um, so I, I did a project for a hotel, a hotel chain. This in is in Laos. Okay. So what, what I did is I do a IT audit on their infrastructure and also PPIS. So I revamp and uh, save some costs for, for them by going online. Right. So these are some of the case studies. And that's all. Thank you very much. Back to you, Zaha. Yes, thank you, Shannon, for all the tips, insight. Though, uh, as we go along from Google and then for uh, Asana, and then I think it get more trickier at the HubSpot, maybe because i not familiar with HubSpot yet, but it seems very interesting because you can manage um, your client based on the data that you capture. So I believe once we get hooked on it, then we can actually explore more. But beyond that, uh, is there anything else that you would like to share? I mean, uh, knowing the fact that Google has covered most of uh, the tools, that you can actually use and and I, I, I'm not sure about the rest but uh, after watching the tips that you shared uh, I think it, it, it will help us more in terms of uh, productivity like uh, the most interesting part that was the chat that chat that I have been struggling to manage uh, my work based on uh, WhatsApp chat where you can still search in WhatsApp chat, but yeah, it's not as uh, accurate as the one that you shot just now. So yeah, yeah. So, okay. and people said that we probably should move to Slack, but then I check around with people, Slack probably good, but it's more in communication. But when you actually showed about that, that chat, I think that's the best. So yeah, I... Uh, I I wouldn't say Google Chat is the best, uh, but Google Chat meets my requirements. Uh. So you you would have to when you select an application to use, the first thing in mind that you should do is what are your requirements. So for us, we will call it user requirements. What do you want to do, and achieve, and when when you consider an application. Uh. Yeah, the, the good thing now with, with the current environment uh, on the cloud, um, if you notice, okay, I personally in, in Pulse region, I think I use about um, at least 10 different applications. Mm, okay. Just to do my work. Yeah. So we, we don't use a single application anymore. Last time we would just say, okay, we use SAP. Uh, we will use uh, Salesforce and that's it. Uh, now that, that's not common anymore. Now we will use specialized software like uh, Gmail, Zero, HubSpot, you know, all these different software uh, to achieve what you need based on your requirements. And then we integrate them. 
So that, that would be an easier uh, task for the small company, especially because you don't need to decide everything at one go. Yeah. So that, that's very important. Eh? Uh, yes. So we actually have few new person came in. I mean, not really new, but they, they are not here all the time. We have Haris here. Are you there, Haris? Uh, yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, all right, good, good. Nice uh, to see you in Zoom networking finally. I mean, yeah, I think the last time it was a long time ago. And then as usual, we have our loyal uh, loyal members here, uh, Mbak Dewi or Ibu Dewi. Teh? Masih di sana, Teh? Iya, tuh kan? Hello. Uh, I'm still in Batam. Masih di Batam? Yes. Oh. Ingat udah di Singapura. <laughs> Gimana keadaan di Batam? Uh, Alhamdulillah baik. Teman-teman uh, sekarang udah banyak bergerak ya. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sorry using mask because I'm still in the uh, Toyota bengkel. Oh, lagi di bengkel ya udah. Enggak uh, apa-apa. Yes. <laughs> okay, Sorry. that's good. Yes, that's good. That's good. Yes, um apa? Uh, Eric. I hope you enjoy your first uh, Zoom networking session. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for uh, the for the knowledge Pak Shanan. Pak Shanan for hosting. Yeah, we 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 hope that you actually uh uh share this Zoom networking session with uh, your network. If you have anything to ask, you can always ask us. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we still have time to chit chat. Normally, we will use this an hour to actually chit chat. Do you have anything that you want to ask? I mean, beside what Shannon presented. Uh, for me, I think uh, there are quite a few. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually have shared when Pashana was sharing, I also shared to my team. So we're okay. going to try them out and see if we have any specific questions. We'll come back to you. <laughs> great, 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 great. Yeah, thanks, good, a good. <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> I, I'm in the uh, Zoom networking uh, WhatsApp group. So yeah, just okay. uh, text me. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sure. I'm not Thanks sure whether Zaha added added Eric in or not. Uh, not yet, I guess. Not yet, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we will add people more uh, yeah. after the session, so no problem. Yeah. Okay. Um. But but Eric, um, so uh, your your market is uh, mainly in, in Indonesia, or do you export out your mm. your doors to to around the region? Yeah, I, I yeah, actually, my main uh, market is uh, Europe, specifically UK. Uh, but uh, we've been trying to di diversify to other regions as well as the US. Uh, but domestically, we are also present. So actually, domestically, we use uh, our, our brand is Virador. Uh, but when we export, we are actually more like a OEM. So we, we manufacture for other brands overseas. Ah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. In, uh, Which country is already so far? Sorry? To, to which country? Uh, UK, uh, right? So yeah, you UK, uh, also to uh, Holland, mm -hmm. uh, and also closer to us, Australia. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. <laughs> nice, Thank you. Nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. So so not, not in Asia, that, that's not your market, I guess, is it? Uh, we are actually. I'm. I'm also exploring how uh, I have. Well, I have supplied to a few projects in Singapore, but mostly for residential. So a few friends uh, and co contacts. So uh, mm. you know, if you have any contacts, uh, definitely uh, do let let me know. If you can also supply to Singapore, because most of the doors in Singapore, I believe, are supplied from Malaysia. Uh, 
you know, with a closed border. Yeah, but in terms of pricing uh, and uh, the product itself, uh, we can say we, we, we should be quite compatible. So uh, there are opportunities. So if you know anyone who needs a door or are looking for you know, expanding a door like a distribution business, uh, let me know. Yes, definitely. Since you said the competitor is from Malaysia, <laughs> we can we can always try to invade the market <laughs> to be more competitive. Uh, yeah. I guess as long as you have something unique that uh, the nations can do or a uh, different design, then I'm sure Singaporeans will love to take a look at that. Yeah. Sometimes it's the, not just the product, uh, the difference of products is the service that you provide. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So it goes both ways. Right. But all the material is uh, from Indonesia, right? Uh, not, not necessarily. So depending on the species of door, uh, I mean species of wood that we use. We also import a lot from the US, from China, from uh, Brazil. So depending oh, on the okay. species of wood. Yeah. Because wood, wood is quite... I mean, it's quite native. There are some certain species that only grows in a certain parts of the world. So really depending on the market, like the, U, the, the British people, they really uh, like, for example, like the door I have here as my background, uh, that's mm. finished in American white oak. So it only, I mean, the, the species of wood only grows in America and the British people really love it, even though the English themselves have English oak, but they, they prefer the American oak. <laughs> The grass oh. is always greener <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How, how, how about uh, like uh, Maranti, all that? We do. We do have that. But uh, Maranti species, uh, you, I mean, it's also available in Malaysia. And yes. Parts of uh, Borneo, Kalimantan. Uh, but Maranti is, I'll say, depending on the type of usage, uh, I think the newer... I would say the younger generation tend to prefer uh, uh, not Maranti because Maranti has that very traditional and conventional connotation to the species. Mm -hmm. So um, for specifically for doors or furniture, I think Maranti is uh, still pretty common, but it's not it's not something special, you know. Like an American oak, uh, it has like, special unique grains that you don't see in a Maranti uh, wood. So really back to preferences. But we, we focus only on make, uh, manufacturing wooden doors. So, uh, yeah, we, we have substitutes, right? Aluminium, steel, and now we have UPVC. But uh, eventually, I, I do think, I believe that uh, you know, wood will still stand uh, because it's a natural material. You cannot replace it. And uh, when we touch it, you, I mean, there are a lot of doors that are made with steel, with PVC, uh, aluminium. It looks like a wood, wooden door, but when you touch it, you can know, oh, this is not wood. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, here to stay, and we are, we are, I mean, there's been a lot of innovation actually in the product itself. Uh, we tend to know that, oh, it's made from a solid single piece of wood, but now, nowadays, we have a lot of uh, composite materials that are inside the door, but outside the door on the surface, they are all veneers, so natural wooden veneers. Amazing. Nice. If only I met, uh, I meet you like two years ago. Because I met this guy from uh, Bahrain. He okay. actually managed a project, a house development project in Bahrain. So he came to Malaysia, then he approached uh, the Chamber of Commerce in Malaysia. He wanted to look for supply of uh, Maranti wood. So I asked, uh, what's the purpose? They said he is actually uh, manufacturing dolls for the house development in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. But yeah, mm -hmm. unfortunate. Uh, you know, selling uh, raw material, like example, woods is quite uh, strict in Malaysia. Those, two, I mean, now, even now. So yeah, maybe if I were to look back at the contact and see uh, if he's still interested, then we can do the business matching. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right, guys, I think we are at the end of the program already. Uh, just to share some information that uh, next week we'll be having same Zoom networking session, uh, but we are going to look into uh, funding, 
startup funding. Uh, it will be presented by uh, uh, one of our members from Philippines. I will share you guys the, the, the information soon. So in the meantime, uh, thank you for joining. It's good to see everyone here, uh, knowing the fact that Malaysia is still un, in lockdown. I still, PK, PK, PB. PKPB. Uh, PKPB, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. CMCO, lah, we call it. It's easier to pronounce, CMCO. Yeah, so too bad for Malaysian. You have to go through that. Uh, it's something similar like the one in Jakarta, PSBB. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I mean, Bandung is open already. So there's a lot of people coming to Bandung for holiday. Oh, so, so nice. Like, uh, if you want to come, like I said, use the business lane. <laughs> it's in a bucket list. <laughs> for now. Yeah. So, yes. Thank you for joining again. Uh, we hope to see you again next week. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, glad, I'm glad that uh, all of us actually learned something new today. So, yeah. Uh, see you guys again. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you, Thank you, Zohar. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 So how was it? It's good. It's good. Uh, apa, honestly, even even myself, I I I I uh, good to know about those chatbot apa semua. because yeah. then it will make move more to communicate with work on 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 Google. You see? Yeah. Mm. and then having the asana now we we just entered asana i think you are aware of that uh, yeah <laughs> we are exploring asana and good to know also that everything what we do in asana is actually reflected in uh, our email then senang nak cari senang uh, it's about yeah. uh, organizing the work and make more more apa, effective lah. Tapi itu lah yang hotspot yeah. hot tu lah aku, aku belum explore lagi. Yeah. Well, what I like about hotspot is that lah. They auto capture all the details lah. Mm. Uh, the one that I'm using now is actually Zoho. So I'm going to move to hotspot but I got to see the integration so far. Between so, hotspot and Zoho. Dia, dia, dia capture data based on uh, apa tu? emails kan in the numbers as well ah tapi dia ah tapi dia capture based on uh, website data juga ah mm. so that, that's a good thing it, it what in in uh, technical term they crawl lah they crawl for data so they aku tak key in anything tau whatever you see on, inside my boho i share again ah uh -huh. uh, Aku tak enter tau benda ni semua. I didn't enter any single information. Yeah. All this. Ha. There's no data entry in hardcore that I did just now. For, for the demo. Semua ni semua is from email. And from the chat lah. This chat lah. Okay. That, that's the two sources lah. Ha. Dah. And, so, okay. and you see what, what they capture. I never, I never even key in this tau. And they capture my company name. So, macam ni kan? <laughs> okay. Uh, what I have uh. in mind now, what I have in mind now is like, I'm trying to solve my, my fashion brand punya CRM, which is memang hmm. manual lah. I only have their numbers that I use to communicate okay. with them through us. So, is it possible uh. aku, 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 I, I have the list of the numbers. I actually use HubSpot. Then Hotspot can actually capture data yeah. dia macam dia punya email apa semua. Probably, right? I think um, if it's from email, I think it can capture quite a lot. Mm. But if it's from phone number, susah sikit. Oh, yeah. Pasal you can Google, you can Google phone number. But uh. but numbers are connected to emails as well. You know, right? Yeah, I know. Tapi mm. um, like, like this number kan, aku tak enter tau. I don't know how they get uh, it. 
Yeah, so it's from my website. Uh. It's my website. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's so they capture the from, is... from the open source. Yeah, uh. Uh, from the open source. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's amazing. Uh. <laughs> I will try. So to... I think if it's from email, yeah, if from, from email, it captures a lot of more things. Uh. Tapi phone number, I will talk to you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, bro. Thank yeah, you so much for the sharing. Oh. I also need to go to another another room. I need to, okay. to jump to yeah. Apiari, Apiari punya uh, networking session. To okay. the young, yeah. younger, younger version network. <laughs> hey, but uh, uh, on a serious note, you need to do something similar to Suki did. Eh? Yang pakai suit tu okay. kan? Suki, Suki. Yeah, apa dia? Mana? Post lah. <laughs> <laughs> kan aku punya, kalau aku off the background. Uh, ada. You know, Instagram background apa video I stop the video. No? Ah uh, ni mic yang macam ni. Kau tengok dia punya tu. Dia ah uh, the sideways dia semua semua. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright okay, bro. Bye bye. Go to go. Thank you so much. Yeah. Keep in, all right. Keep in touch. No Assalamualaikum. Okay. Waalaikumsalam.